This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Little kitty, little kitty. Hello, hello, kitty. Hello, kitty. How are you, kitty? Kitty, 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 kitty. Okay, mouse. I have a mouse here. I have a mouse here. Uh, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. That which one is that again? That's muddy. That's muddy waters. That's muddy waters. Yeah. Everything gonna be alright this morning. That's right, muddy. Yeah, they could say, "Gee, isn't that racist? You named a black cat muddy waters." Well, I didn't name him Rastus or Slave. You know, I named him muddy waters. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's the one I like. Yeah. So I uh, number one, you said that at some point here. Oh, excuse me. You know what I got to do that I didn't do? I always forget to do this during the day because there's a, a lot of light coming in here from the oh, outside. Light. So I don't turn on my lights, and then I look so much better when I turn on you're the lights. You're a wall. You're radiant. You're a teenager. You look like you're ready to go to a Fabian concert. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you, you told me that you're boiling water. I'm boiling, I'm burning, my coffee maker is going... Yep. Do you have a coffee maker or you just boil water and add it to... I got a coffee maker. I got the whole nine yards here. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. What kind of, yeah. co- what kind of what coffee is, maker? So, I don't know. It's a Hewlett Packard. I don't know what the hell a it is. Hewlett a Hewlett Packard, coffee. right. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a Dell Viking. You didn't get one of these things like I have with the K-Cups, right? Ah, I got no. I got just a little, little, uh, little jug, and you put the water in. It goes, blah, 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 blah. and before you know it, you got. Well, coffee how many in your cups of coffee a day do you do? A thousand. No, I, bet I, I stay up late at night, uh-huh. and I smoke my weed, and I watch my TV, and I play my music, and I drink my coffee, maybe two big cups, and that's it. Then right now I'm going to have like a half a cup, and then I won't drink again until yeah, like yeah. You know, two in the morning. I do too, but. I do about, I would say, a, a cup and a half a day. Cup and a half a day. That's not bad. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and, I, you know, there was a time when I never even liked coffee. I didn't touch it for years until, like, about 10 years ago I got into it. And I went, I, it started when I went to San Francisco and worked at KML in the beginning, okay? And uh, they, uh, I went to do a morning show. And you know, you're tired in the morning, and somebody said, "Why well, we have a coffee machine? Have some coffee." And I went, "Well, I don't drink coffee. I don't like coffee." And they said, "Well, give it a try." So I, I, I had some coffee and I put some sugar in it, okay, and I tasted uh-huh. it, and it gave me a lift. Yeah. So I started drinking, and then I became, a you know, not addicted to coffee, but it became a regular part of my daily yeah. regimen. Oh, it's and, nice in the morning or whenever. It's, it's nothing wrong. It. Well, it's it's good, and I uh, I never liked cream until recently, and then they came out with this uh, low, no carb uh, creamer that is really good. It really tastes yeah. great. They got in hazelnut and eggnog. Oh yeah, they got French vanilla, all that Italian spice, whatever. Yeah, yeah. and I do, I use flavors. I use the sweet cream, and it's really good. And I, I said, now I like my coffee with uh, cream in it because it it it's, it's, it tastes better. And I, I've gone all those years without cream. I can't believe it. Yeah, where, what a fool I've been. Yeah, where in New York? By the way, folks, you got to know that in New York, you're from New York. What do yep. you call coffee with cream in it? Oh, uh, give me uh, in England, it's a white coffee. I don't no, know what they call no, it. In no, New York. In New York, they say, give me a fucking coffee with cream in it. No, no, no. give me a regular. A regular, okay. Yeah, regular, regular to go. Regular is uh, is the coffee that you get. Uh, it, it, you get it with cream. If you say if you say I want it black, then you get it black. Uh-huh. Oh, there's the other cat, right? Yeah. Which one is You're this? Which one is this now? <laughs> show show it. That, that's I am. That's I am. Walking away. And there you might be able to see Nisi asleep on the bed there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we got the whole gang here. You're, you're, you're amazing because really it's only old ladies that are supposed to have cats. <laughs> I got a little brandy in the shifter. 
<laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making pod Paris spats <laughs> yeah. for McKinley's inauguration. <laughs> so, so you know, we have a we have this discussion about once every every time we talk to you. What's happening with the computer? Oh, it's still dead. <laughs> I don't have two hundred dollars to put into the goddamn computer. Oh, the God. whole computer didn't cost that much money. If I was there, I would fix it. Like I have oh. arthritis, so I can't exactly go like that. Well, if I were Ringo, I'd be rich, but I'm not. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But I, I do go like, mm, ah, uh, you know. Uh, so it's 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 good. It's uh, it's it, bad. Well, hey, you know, there's a way to get into it. I just don't know it, and neither do the well, people. Uh, they didn't know there either. They knew, but it's like two hundred fifty dollars. They know, but uh, for less than that, they don't know. Here's all they got to do. All you got to do is go and erase that hard drive. You, I you know. You can pull it out and erase it, okay? And then put it back in, and then it goes. Oh, you need an operating system. So then you just add an operating system. And uh, what is that? Somebody's trying to call you. Is that what's happening? He's futzing around now. Now we've lost your audio. Wait, wait, wait what, what? Steve. I don't want to disconnect anything. Hello, Steve. Steve. Oh, hello, hello. Well, now you, now you need you don't. We don't have a picture on you. A picture. Now we got the sound. Jesus Christ! I get now, 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 we, now we have the now we have the picture. Hello. Why do you play with that? I don't do. I play as soon as the phone rings and the picture goes off. I don't do anything with it. And it says scam like they get a hundred of those goddamn calls a day. I hate them. Isn't there isn't there a way that you can on your phone tell it do not answer the phone right now? Well, why don't you come out here and you can figure that out too while you're fixing my computer? I don't know. I just don't want to talk to these people. Boy, I mean, I have to make house calls for people like you. Jeez, almighty! Yeah, come on out. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm only like eight states away. Come on out. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll take a chance of getting COVID just for you. COVID schmovid. COVID schmovid. But anyway, Holocaust, Holocaust. Come on. No, you just uh, you just somehow you erase that hard drive, and then when you put it back in, it's going to say there's no, you know, you don't have any uh, 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 operating system. So then you put in the operating system. And there you and, go. and then you, it's it's back the way it was. Yeah, I'd rather work at it with a baseball bat. Now, here's, the, here, here, here's the problem he had, folks. It, he put in his uh, your yeah. what do you call it, right? Your uh, uh, that's a word. Password. That's a word. And it Sorry. said that's not the password. Now I don't know why that happens on your machine. I would know how to handle it, say on my Mac. Uh, but uh, there's got to be ways of getting around that and getting in and re redoing your password there is i just don't know it i'm no i'm not computer sad I, I said i would do this last week i will do it again i will do it today i will look up on the internet how do you get into a machine a, a windows machine where you have where it doesn't recognize your password uh, and i'll bet there are yeah. like a thousand different things they will do this do that you know but yeah, I get a new computer and a lot of things, a lot and, of answers. And then I, then I can call you and we can go through it step by step. Okay, press F3. Oh, he started a fire. Yeah, but I mean, to not have that computer working is, you know, ridiculous. What, what are you doing, is another call? No, somebody just sent me a message and I don't want to look at it. Oh, okay. I'm in demand today. God knows why, but I'm in fucking demand at all. Of you. you know, you're one step away from doing a call to to Larry Brown when it comes to not knowing about computers. No, yeah, no. He, well, he's, he, he doesn't see, even have sound on and, his. And, and I don't know what's worse. The, the guy who won't use computers, like Larry. I mean, he has a computer, but it's, you know, it's... Uh, it's several many years old and he also has a flip phone he has a, a flip phone and so we do the flip phone i don't have video on him uh but you're one step removed away from that i know you know you're the guy who i can't get the computer fixed so we could get it you know get a good nice solid pick that's right so you've been working at all uh, not for a couple of weeks, but I got some more coming up, and I'm just sitting on my ass enjoying it. I just I got the Peacock channel on the phone, and I'm watching a lot of Columbo episodes. Really? I keep myself very amused at night. Are you paying for Peacock? What? No, not a cent. Oh, okay, so that's the free Peacock. I'm a damn penny. I watch Columbo for nothing. 
That's the free Peacock where you got to watch it with commercials, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a very quick commercial. I, I bought the service without commercials. Uh huh. And even with that, I thought Peacock sucked. Ah, well, well, I like Columbo when they got a whole bunch of episodes I never saw, so I'm I'm into it. Really? Oh, yeah, okay. I love Columbo. Okay. I just discovered it. I never watched it before. Yeah. So now it's all new to me. And listen, I got one more question. Yeah, it takes them eight times to leave the room. It's the best. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Just one more thing, sir. Uh, your fingerprints were around the body's throat and a note saying that you did it in your handwriting. By the way, Peter Falk, the I'm nicest Falk. guy I've ever interviewed. What, nice guy? Nicest guy I ever interviewed. Oh, you interviewed him? I love Peter Falk. I don't know anything about him. I, I interviewed him. He was in my studio in New York at Sirius XM, and we got along famously. We just had a great time together. Seems like he'd be just this nice, laid-back little Jewish guy. He also liked the fact... Yeah, well, he also liked the fact that I... Uh, that uh, some of his movies I liked were the movies he liked that most people didn't. Uh-huh. You know, like my favorite Peter Falk film. What do you think it is? What's your... What's your favorite, Peter? Well, Falk? Murder Incorporated is probably the best known one, but I like one called The Vig he did in Boston, which really? is one of my favorite movies. I have two, one of which is obvious. Okay, The In-Laws. The, oh, the In-Laws is great. I forgot about that. You know, it's a great comedy. And the oh, two yeah. of them together, Alan Arkin and and uh, yep. uh, and, and Peter Falk, just bliss, uh, oh, yeah. absolute bliss. But my favorite picture is a f- film... Maybe you've seen it, maybe you haven't, called Tune In Tomorrow. Uh, I don't know that one. This is with uh, Keanu Reeves, mm-hmm. and I'm trying to remember who the woman was again. Uh, Barbara Hershey and Peter Falk. And it takes place in New Orleans. And he is a writer of radio programs back around the late 40s who shows up in the city after he leaves the other city under mysterious reasons. Uh-huh. And starts writing this daily soap opera uh, that that uh, he he you know that he writes, and all of a sudden, as the picture goes on, we begin to find out why he was chased out of the other town, because uh-huh. he starts writing terribly racist programs. Oh no! <laughs> uh, uh, against the I'm trying to remember who it was. It was it was uh, of the Albanians, I think. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, those Albanians, they those smell. Albanians, sir. Yeah, but anyway, uh, it is just a wonderful movie. Oh, Because cool. he plays kind of this guy who, who brings this couple together and helps them fall in love uh, through, oh, his, through his machinations. And he is just, uh, he's ambrosia in this picture. He, it's uh, the best P- Peter Falk picture, I think, ever. Oh, wow, I'll have to check that out. I could watch that one over and over and uh, over and over again. I'm a big fan. I love the Columbo character, too, because he's like this this yeah. savant who just, you know, they think he's an idiot, but he solves every crime. It's yeah, amazing. yeah. But he was just, he, he was a great guy. I really liked him. We it's really, like he's and a good we, guy. And I don't know anything about him. But. We, we got along terrific. I mean, you know, uh, he's the best interview that I've ever done. Yeah. Ah, it's wonderful being here, sir. Just yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I loved him. Loved him. Uh, but uh, uh, who other? What other actors do you love? Would you watch? Do you go out of your way to watch like a Peter Falk? I love Peter Falk. I like. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, well, of course, everyone loves De Niro and Pacino and all those guys. And Meryl Streep was amazing. And anyone who could be a good chameleon. Yeah, but the uh, trouble is, you know, I can't think of anything bad that Falk ever did. He, you know, the picture might have sucked, but he didn't. That he was oh, yeah. The, he was the one saving grace. Murder in Incorporated was this like low budget film, but he was great in it. Abe Rose played you, this great I'll, bad guy. Oh yeah, he he was nominated for an Academy Award for that. You gotta take you take what you want, you take it. Yeah, and but anyway, I'll tell you another actor who, no matter how bad the movie is, he's always good. He always rises above the material. John Good uh-huh. John Goodman. Oh, I love John Goodman. He's yeah. great. Yeah. He always rises above the material. Yeah. If Mike Pritchard made it, he'd be John Goodman. He can do anything from the Big Lebowski to Roseanne. Uh Uh-huh, sure. So, I mean, he's really terrific. Excuse me. I'm I'm getting my eye operated on in a couple of weeks, so I want to be doing this. So, I hopefully won't be doing that anymore. Uh Uh-huh. I was going to get rid of the bags, but I've decided not to. What do you care at this age? Who cares? The bags are character, you know. 
And, right. and by the way, I'm not planning on getting laid anytime soon. Yeah. Come so, on, we'll go to the disco. We'll meet some chicks. Uh, meet some play to your anyway, chicks at the disco. Yeah. But I always felt that like Good, Goodman was good in everything he did. Yeah. You know, he even if it was a bad picture, he brought yep. something to his part, you know. Yep. Uh, but uh, De Niro, the problem I have with De Niro is De Niro got bad. Yeah. You know, he got into real mediocre crap. And now yeah. he's just, you know, he's doing an impression of Robert De Niro. Yeah, stuff to do, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like I, for years, my verdict was out on Brando. Uh, and then I decided he was probably one of the greatest actors ever. Uh, but the re where, it took me a long time to come to it because I started looking at what he was doing in pictures. And he took a lot of bad pictures. That's the reason I didn't have respect for him. He just took the job. I don't think he really gave a shit about acting. you know. But he happened to be yeah. really good. I mean, yeah. Godfather, come on. That's a beautiful performance. Oh, sure. You know? sure. That's the same guy from Guys and Dolls, yeah. He, well, forget that. You know, Frank Sinatra should have played Sky Masters. Uh, that could be a lady tonight, Michael. Yeah, right. That could be better than a lady to begin with. Do you know why he was always looking like this when he was talking? He was yeah. looking at cue cards. They had yeah, cue, cue cards, cards on everywhere, everywhere. 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 Yep. On the camera, on the ceiling, on the walls, you know. You expect me to memorize this shit for only a million dollars? He he wouldn't memorize. He, he didn't want to memorize. I don't feel like studying. I never liked it in school. I don't like it now. Does somebody read me the words? Yeah, so I but I mean, you go back to some of his stuff that he did that was just absolutely terrific. Uh -huh. he, he did a show called Bedtime Story with David Niven which was a comedy. It was later made into a movie called Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, which is another, oh, sure. another one of my favorite films. But the part that Steve Martin played in that film, he played in Bedtime Story. Huh? And you'd think, okay, the comedy actor, Brando, he was, again, ambrosia. Mm -hmm. He was terrific. He was terrific at comedy. Oh, sorry. Jeez, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I began to have a, an amazing respect for Brando. And that I felt that even bad Brando was worth watching, because there was something uh, to be learned from what he was doing. He was just a great actor. Yeah. Sure. Uh, any other actors that you can think of? Uh, another I can think of. I like James Dean a lot, but he got cut down too quick. So uh, you know, uh, well, I Sal Minio, I like Sal Minio a lot, but he got cut down quick. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm wondering if James Dean had lived. Uh, how big he would have actually become? And he would my, have been a very good middle-aged actor, you know. What I like said, no, I, I, I had a, I had, a, I had Mark Frost on in San Francisco, who was the guy who created, uh, uh, along with uh, what's his name, David Lynch, um, uh, Twin Peaks. Uh -huh. And I said, I often had a theory that if James Dean were alive today, he would have been on Twin Peaks. And he nah. said, absolutely, I would have made him the guy who owned the hotel. Nah. I said, instead of Richard Boehmer, he said, absolutely, he'd be my first choice for the part. Sure. My theory was is that he would have not been that great. You know? Now, I had a friend who since died, Jack Garfine, who was a teacher at the Actors Studio, who discovered James Dean, gave him his first role. Uh -huh. you know, and they were friends forever. Well, until he died. Yeah. He, in fact, saw Dean take off in the Porsche. Oh, really? Yikes. As, as he was going upstate. And he told Gary. him, take it easy. Don't drive too fast. Yeah. And then he was in a screening of Giant with, uh, Mer with uh, Liz Taylor. And a guy comes in from the side of the place and whispers something in Taylor's ear. And she goes, oh, my God. And that's when they found out that James Dean had died. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. You know. But I said to him, do you think he would have been a great, continued to be a great actor? Do you think he would have had a career? You know, because he only had three movies, right? Yeah. And, and he said, absolutely. He felt he would, be, would have been huge. Mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know. I don't know what we'd be saying about the James Dean if he were still alive. I think he would have been pretty big, like a De Niro or so, because he just he proved that young. 
And then why would he have? Why would he have lost it? You know, he was he was cast to play uh, uh, Rocky Graziano, and somebody up there likes me. Then he got killed, and Paul Newman got it. But he would have kept getting movies and proving himself. You know, maybe when he got old and fat, he wouldn't have been that great anymore. But yeah, you know, how many of us are? I always assumed also that he was gay. Well, that's you know whatever. Yeah, and I said I asked Jack about that, and he said no, he wasn't. He absolutely was not gay. Well, he was in love with an actor named Pierre Angeli, who uh, Pierre, later killed Pierre, herself. Pierre Angeli, yeah, yeah. yeah she, and she, then, uh, she married Vic Damone that freaked him out. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did you say she killed himself? Did she she, no, she killed herself in the sixties, uh, in the seventies, seventy-one. I think she died. There was but a, he was in love with her, and her parents didn't approve of him because he was not the Italian. So she married the Vic Damone. And Vic it Damone. Broke James Dean's heart, but. Yeah, you don't want to marry anybody whose initials are VD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> VD. Yeah, uh, but Mrs. Uh, D, how are you? Yeah, you know, you know, um, um, I think when I've heard, I never appreciated Vic Damone. You know, he was to me he was just know, a, an Ita- about. Italian crooner, didn't appeal to yeah. me. Yeah, but when Sinatra would talk about singers he liked, he would always talk about Damone. I like Vic Damone. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, hey, listen. he's a cool cat. He never made a pass to my wife. He's okay. His legs can stay that way. Yeah, right. Well, who was the guy who said, uh, gee, uh, uh, Frank Sinatra saved my life once. Yep. And how was that? He said, that's enough. That's enough, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, Funny stuff. I always hate this whole, you know, I'm a big Frank Sinatra fan. I mean, I'm just, I, I, that's all I listen to on my, on my uh, iPhone for the most part. And um, I always get very mad when they do this whole thing about, oh, he was mobbed up. Yeah. You know, he wasn't mobbed up. He knew he, guys. He, let's, uh, he knew guys because these guys, when he w- couldn't find a job after that's right. after Cap, uh, Columbia dumped him and MGM dumped him, and he really, you know, he, was, he, he went through a hard period. They like to pretend like it was a real down period, but it was only a year or so. Yeah, but during that period of time, the only people who would hire him and kept him making money were mobsters who would book right. him into a club at an extraordinary price, and he always appreciated them yep, for that. Sure, yeah, and I, wouldn't you? You know, sure. Yeah, these guys are gangsters. Kept them from hey Frank, I know you're not working. We got you a gig at Tony Smegmetti's place down there, down a block there. Well, yeah, you pay for some calzone, and you can sleep on a table. There was know? some big club down in New Jersey. It was all mobbed up that used to hire him like crazy during that period of time. Yeah, you know, and and he he appreciated that, and he well he should. I mean, if I had mobsters who kept sure. me alive during that period of time, I would have a certain loyalty to them. Yeah, because I wouldn't want to owe them, but, uh, you know, I'd be... Well, I yeah. don't know them as mobsters. I know them as people who were friends and took care right, of me yeah. when I was down and out, you know? So I always get very mad when everybody talks about, oh, he's all mobbed up and this, that, and the other thing, you know? Uh, he, he wasn't so mobbed up that when Frank Jr. got kidnapped that the mob could do anything about oh, it. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, sure. <laughs> you know? Do you remember that whole incident? 1960, the end of 63, right after Kennedy got his. Do you know who was involved in that ca- kidnapping? I think some friends of Jan and Dean were no, involved. No, not so. some friends of Jan and Dean. Oh, Dean, Jan and Dean? Dean, <laughs> Dean Torrance was was one of the people strongly suspected of of, of, wow. of, of, of being involved in the kidnapping. Yeah. Oh, my. And he started singing in the trunk of the car. He said, we got the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, they 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 got the money and then they they uh, they caught them, so they didn't get to spend the money. Uh, but uh, that was a that was, that was a horrific time. Everybody tried to say that Frank Jr. had set the whole thing up for yeah, publicity. it was like publicity stuff. And I don't think that I don't think so either. I think they just nailed them and uh, you know, we'll get I some think, money out of the family. I think these no idea. a couple of guys who just thought, hey, this is a great idea. Who's a, we'll kidnap Frank's son. He'll hand us over some money. We'll hand over the kid, and that'll be it. Yeah. Right, you know. Uh, but, uh, one <laughs> Wasn't of the that most, simple? One of the most famous crimes in show business history. <laughs> yeah. That and the one we never talk about, William Hurst uh, killing, um, who was the director? I'm trying to remember his name now. But uh, he killed a director thinking he was Charlie Chaplin in the dark. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But they never they never made it. Uh, it's not official. It's a it's a uh, Hollywood yeah. rumor. 
But if you ever yeah. get a chance, there's a great picture about it called The Cat's Meow. The Cat's Meow. Yeah. William, I'm trying to remember the name of the director, got killed. But he thought that uh, uh, Marion Davies was having an affair with uh, Charlie Chaplin, which she was, actually. Uh -huh. And uh, they were on this boat uh, late at night, and she saw him with a guy talking to him very close. And it was, it was this director, uh, whose name I can't remember right now. Uh, and uh, so he pulled out a gun, supposedly pulled out a gun and shot him dead. Yikes. Crazy. And it they, was a simpler time. And they quickly, they said he had a he died of a heart attack, and they got him off the boat really fast. And Luella Parsons, who was on the boat there, started spreading the rumor that no, he had a heart attack, and nah. covering it oh, up. For, that's how she kept her job all those years with Hearst. Wow. Because she covered that up. So. Wow. Ah. Anyway, great crimes in history. Hey, listen, we better go here. We've just yep. run out of a lot of time. I Damn. talked in a couple of weeks. How's that? You got it, my friend. A couple of weeks is good. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the wonderful, the marvelous, the terrific Stephen Pearl. Yay! Is Gabnet the great? This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. Okay. No, well, I screwed up a little bit there, but what the hell? I screw up all the time, don't I? And I, guess what I did? Look at this. See? Right? Look. Turn on the lights. There we go. I don't know what my problem is, folks. Man, I'm just forgetting all kinds of stuff now. Maybe I just don't care anymore. Maybe that's it. Maybe I. Uh, it's time to give up, as it were. Okay. Uh, that was Stephen Pearl. Thanks to Stephen. I appreciate his uh, his input every couple of weeks. And, uh, uh, you know, what have you. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, I guess we should go to our citizen panel, huh? There, uh, there, there, a couple of them are already in, in, the, uh, in the grouping here. Let me see here if I can do that. Okay, and then I go over here and I push that button. And there we go. Oh, look who we got here. William Ferguson is here, and Alan is here, and all the way from uh, down under, it's uh, Ross Manuel. Yeah, right. Or Doc, Doc Winters. Doc Winters. Hey, oh. Now, what is that? What is that? It, it, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? What is that? Do you work at, like... Uh, Sonic Burger or what? Nah. <laughs> I just want, I just about to sit at my desk. Uh, it's it an old uh, Air Force um, garrison cap. Oh, is that from uh, Australia? Yeah. Because it kind of looks like something you'd wear if you were at like a, a the Shake Shack or some place like that, you know, <laughs> some hamburger joint. It's a garrison hat. Yeah, the Air Force is here. No, okay. The Air Force is here. Like to wear the garrison caps. It's a throwback to the British. Mm. Well, I had one in the Navy. What? I had one in the Navy. You had one in the Navy? I had a Navy hat. Well, they they, they changed over the uniforms. Um, they, cut, they were khaki and, and uh, black, and they gave us a garrison cap to go with that. Really? Well, when you were in the Navy? Mm-hmm. Well, because all, the only cap I had was the Donald Dick, Duck. Uh, I call it yeah. the Donald Duck hat. <laughs> the Dixie Cup. Yeah, the Dixie Cup, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, we had that. When I first joined in 2003, we had that. And I think we switched over about 2007 or eight. And they also went with blue Digicams, which I never could understand that. Yeah. Did you always, you always also have, like, the high-vis band around them? Yeah. <laughs> which defeats the purpose of digital camouflage. Well, let me ask you, though. Um, when I was in the Navy, uh, when I got my first outfit, the, the dress blues had the 13 buttons in a kind of a square bib-like thing in front, of the, in front of the pants. So if mm -hmm. you had to take a pee, you had to undo 13 buttons. Right. You know. Um, but then they did away with that. They went to just a zipper, and it just didn't make the pants look as good. 
You know, they really look good with that nice button. button. Huh? I had the buttons on my dress blues. Yeah. 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 And then we had the uh, let's see here. There were three there were three different uh dip, three different kinds that we that we wore, to be honest with you. We wore the dress blues. Mm -hmm. We wore the I guess casual blues, I guess we could call them. I mean, they had the piping and everything like that, but they were they were subtle. Uh, and and then we had the the work one, the work outfits, the dungarees, the yeah. dungarees, yeah. Uh, um, and, and, but all of them were topped off by the by the cap. You know, what is that noise? Oh, that's somebody opening a bag in my house. Oh well. Can you uh, maybe you should mute yourself till they're through making all their noise. Uh, Jeff, are you there? Jeff? Hello, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. It's we muted. don't see you. We don't hear you. Let me see here. Let me tell. Now you can uh, hear me. Well, right? now we should be able to. Yeah, now we can hear you. But now uh, my face disappeared. Yeah, well, uh, here, I'm going to send you a little note here. That's going to say ask to start video. Okay, does it say something now? Is it asking you yeah. to start? Yeah. And then uh, I guess click on that. There you go. There you hey. go. Hey. See? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You're a genius. No, I'm not a genius. <laughs> That's the last thing I am. Listen, <laughs> for all these weeks I haven't been able to solve uh uh, uh, Pearl's uh, problem, and and by the way, your suggestion, Ray, would not work. It would not. I did it. Well, maybe you did it. Can you expect Stephen Pearl to do it? Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. No, yeah. he wouldn't be able yeah. to do it. Yeah, I mean, no, okay. people, <laughs> no, I forgot about the fact that he was doing it. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I were out there, I could probably get his computer going in five minutes. You know, one way or the other. Though I just have one in the other room, which is bad shape now won't boot up but you know i i always can figure out how to get these things to boot the worst thing you if you if your computer isn't working and you can't get it to boot up right the best thing you can do is just pull the uh, the hard drive put it in a brand new spanking new hard drive and then it'll ask you to install the uh, operating system which usually it goes online to do so mm -hmm. You know, in a Windows machine, so it's you know it's pretty simple. Uh, but he he doesn't know how to do it, and the only people who will do it for him say, well, it's going to cost you two hundred and fifty bucks. It ain't two hundred and fifty bucks worth of work, I got to tell you. So, but oh, that's in the client, huh? That's soaking the client. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, if you have nothing on the computer that you care about, then just install a new hard drive or erase the one you've got or whatever and just reinstall the operating system. It's to be like a brand mm -hmm. new machine. It'll work like a brand new machine. That's what I'm doing right here right now on my Dell. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, I've got a problem with my uh, Apple in the other room now. For some reason, it just doesn't seem to want to boot up. So mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do something to make it work. But anyway, so how are all you guys doing tonight? We're good. Uh -huh. Good. Good. Pretty We're good. not going to Afghanistan. What? I'm not going to Afghanistan. Well, you know, they may call you up because we may start running out of people. Between COVID and uh, people getting killed in Afghanistan, we may be the only ones left. <laughs> you know. Yes, Ray. I had uh, surgery on my knee today. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. How bad? Yeah. How about how bad a surgery was it? Was it just a minor surgery? Major surgery. I had to have my ACL replaced because I broke it skiing in April and meniscus repaired. Oh, mm. okay. Well, I have a I have a torn meniscus. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, but, they had to put an ACL from a corpse in my. Cause, uh, oh, that's well. That's in, spooky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they drill a hole and they like loop it through like a fishing line. Yeah. And attach mm -hmm. it on both sides. And, yeah. Well, I had a meniscus go on uh, my meniscus go on me about I don't know about a year and a half ago or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I went to a doctor and they said, "Well, you know, we could we could operate on it, but be best thing to do is just try to live with it and see if you can if you can get past it." 
And so I was just very careful favoring that knee and uh, putting a lot of uh, different ointments on it and uh, going to physical therapy and so on. And it, 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 I still, I'm still careful with that knee, but I, I, it, it's not, I don't have a problem with it. But I imagine yours was in pretty bad shape if they wanted to operate. Oh yeah, it was in bad shape. I couldn't even go up and down stairs fairly in Europe, it was horrible. And the, the I had meniscus on the right and like you, I. I tried to do what you did and didn't work though. It just got worse and worse. And then I had to have surgery on that one. Well, how about it happened to me, seven years ago. It happened to me. I was I was in the kitchen and I got down on the floor to do something on my knees and all of a sudden this thing went on me. It doesn't take much. You, know, you just have to just like went, move in the wrong like, way and the, at the right time. Like a it. twist or something and my yeah. I, I, I couldn't walk on it. For, for quite a few days I couldn't walk on it. It was terrible. Yeah, that's what happened with me with my ACL. I was in April. I went skiing. Mm -hmm. I was doing fine. I just the way I turned the last run, it just popped. I heard it like really loud. It hurt like yeah. hell. And that yeah. was that. Wow, that's <laughs> that's a well. I'm glad to hear that you got it taken care of. Yeah, and, and I guess Thanks. you're gonna, you're going to be okay, right? Yeah, it's like a it's like a year of rehabilitation. Except for like the, after the first three months, you can walk and all, but you got to do physical therapy for about a year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I hate about physical therapy? Oh. I like going to physical therapy. Come on, let's go in, let's go do our physical therapy and hello physical therapist, help me along. And then when it's over, he says, "Here's a bunch of drawings. Go home and do this twice a day." <laughs> and I'm going, "Wait a minute. I didn't come to you for homework. I got out of school. <laughs> I thought that was going to be it for homework." You mean I this know. isn't going to get better unless I do this at home? Yeah, then what no, am I sucks. coming to see you for? You know, nice. and you know they say do this, do five reps on this. So I, instead of just doing five reps of it sincerely, I'm just going one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we go to the next <laughs> one. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just trying to get over it as fast as possible, but you know. Uh, we just lost at least you're doing something a lot of people don't do anything so yeah, that's yeah. good yeah so anyway um, uh, 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 we had a in the news today the the Afghanistan thing uh, we oh, lost what like, was is it 15 drudge no. says 13 uh, I heard 12 what I heard 12 you heard 12 yeah. I think the uh, the uh, Pe Pentagon was saying 15 if I'm not mistaken <laughs> Well, let me see. But uh, uh, all I know is that when I was looking at the various networks, mm -hmm. uh, Fox was doing everything they could to amp it up. Oh, like we're oh, oh, okay. Like it was Vietnam. I, mean, I don't mean it like that to be tongue in cheek, but because it's the yeah, boss. Yeah, but I mean, you know. And then uh, I go over to MSNBC and they say several people got We have more dead in New York in a month. Huh? Than they, we have more dead in New York with shootings in a month than they probably had pulling out of Afghanistan. Well, uh, yeah, but you know, nevertheless. I mean, I mean, it's a loss of life. I don't mean to sugarcoat it. Those guys here in New York only have one gun. These um, guys yeah. have submachine guns, tear right gas, uh, yeah. uh, stun guns, everything on them. Uh, and yet, all it takes is one, you know, uh, suicide bomb, and they're gone. That's it. And the thing is, the Taliban says, you know, they they're not happy with this. They they don't yeah. like they don't like Al Qaeda. What is it? P now or they're like a new, new version of ISIS. I heard. I don't know what they're yeah, called. ISIS, like. ISIS, 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 ISIS K. K. That's it. ISIS K. <laughs> um, they don't like ISIS K at all. Uh, and they don't also don't like this happening because they wanted to see us to get the hell out of Dodge without any kind of incident and just get us out and have us say goodbye on the end at the end of the month. But uh, I don't know that we're getting out of there immediately after this happened, you know. And, oh, and if the if the Taliban really were cool, what they'd say is, look, we don't like these guys either. Why don't you say keep a certain amount of troops here to just decimate these guys? You know, it's the same thing happened in Iraq, and that and, and I don't and Iraq and Afghanistan don't want to see this happen here. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, well, this is ISIS. What R is it? What is it, the designation? K. It is called uh, ISIS K. It sounds like a cereal. 
It's, it's yeah, called it's like, it's Islamic State uh, Khorasan. <laughs> yeah, it, which is a, uh, a, what do you call it? In, uh, it's oh, a, it's the toy it's surprise a, in the cereal is a gun. You pull out. Yeah, no, what it is is it's a, uh, it's a you know, one of the areas of, of, uh, of uh, Afghanistan. And um, uh, supposedly, uh, you know, they don't like them. They don't think they're they're good for them, you know. And plus, it, it, they challenge the authority of the Taliban, and they don't like that either. So it's 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 a real it's becoming a very big shit show over there. Yeah, <laughs> coming, you know. And they say, and and these guys who died are heroes. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. The guys who died are heroes, but the guys who didn't die aren't heroes. I didn't die. Yes, no, but well, you know, I mean, do you yeah, have to die to be a hero? I guess you I hope have. not. I mean, <laughs> that's the prime requisite. It's not good. I want to. I don't want to be. A I hero. have to die to get into the Radio Hall of Fame, but you know, yeah. you, you don't have to die to necessarily be a hero. And I don't know that we should. You know, we make a big deal about our our men in our our men in uh, Afghanistan or our men in uh, Iran. Uh, and uh, oh, they're you know they're heroes, and I'm going. Wait a minute, you picked them up physically and took them to this godforsaken place, and then put them in front of a bunch of people who started shooting at them. That's not really a hero. That's an indentured servant who's been sent somewhere to get killed. Mm. And really, uh, you got to take some of the blame for it. You know, but anyway, maybe I'm being too. Am I being too something? We don't even know what the two something is. So you know, what the hell? two somethings are eighteen and nineteen year olds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I. Here's the first of all, my theory has always been that okay if you've got um, milk in the refrigerator and you've got an old an old bottle of milk and you got a new bottle of milk where do you put the the old bottle of milk you put it in the front and you use it first yeah, right that's what I do. why don't we do that with the military why don't we like you know uh, draft people like Jeff and I and put us there first because you know i mean we're the oldest Use us first, and then get to the younger people who've got their whole lives ahead of them. Not that I would want to go, mind you. I don't think they would take the old people. I think, isn't there an age limit for all? No, 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 I'm making a joke here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, right. uh, I'll, I'll explain it to you later when I don't. Okay. Have yeah. more time. <laughs> just, I wonder what the age limit is to sign up. Yeah, but I mean, I just think uh, I think it's a shame. Uh, that we send young people off to war when they have well, their whole lives ahead of them, you know? And true. and I, I find it a shame. And every time they go, well, you know, your, your, your sons didn't die in vain. Yes, they did. Anybody who dies in a war dies in vain. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I would... But here's a question to Alex. I would say when we were going after Hitler, that was a just cause, but Vietnam would be in vain. My mother always said she would never have oh, said anything. Vietnam was in vain. This whole thing in the Mideast has been in vain. Yeah, it's no way we were ever I mean, going Have they ever gotten along in the Middle East at all, no, ever? It's not a question of getting along in the Middle East. I think it's more a question of have we ever won? Has anybody ever won in the Middle East? And nobody has. Never won, period. What? I mean, the Ottoman Empire was pretty good for a while there. Did they do okay? I mean, they controlled it for 250 years. Yeah, but years. That, they're, they're of that area. Anybody who's tried <laughs> to go in there who's not from that place never survives Basically, it. following the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire, France and Britain carved up this whole area. Basically just dismantled all these areas and they arbitrarily declared countries. That's why Iran and Iraq and Palestine, these countries exist because of Britain and France. Yeah. And they literally had zero regard to the ethno, ethnic, religious backgrounds of any of the peoples here. They right. just decided, right. well, well, we'll build one here, a line here. So that's why you've got like Khorasan, which is this new uh, Islamic State group. They have they start in like in Iran and Afghanistan and in Mongolia. That's Khorasan. That's that's actual Greater Khorasan. 
And then you've got, you know, the Islamic State of Levant, which is where ISIS is. That's because that area traditionally was all one country, or one region. And I think that's part of the problem here. Well, it isn't the part West of West has basically forced all these ethnic groups to work together, who traditionally never worked together. Well, isn't part mm. of the problem that we can't seem to comprehend as uh, white people here on, in the West? We don't understand tribalism. You know, we believe and, that our way of running things is the only way to run things, and that's right. part of the problem. But we don't understand tribal societies, mm. and we no. we go over there and we go, oh well, you know, do it our way, and everything will be fine. Well, I'm sorry, but for how many centuries have they not been doing it our way? Mm-hmm. You know. But own. that's the European colon, you know, colonialism problem. I mean, when you know the you know the, the English went to America or went to Australia, it was the same thing. It's like well, you don't have a recognized system of government that we recognize, so you must be savages. Well, it's when they <laughs> when they went to India, when the British went to India. Hmm. You know, they colonialized India and made their lives a living hell. And exactly. So we see. So and yet, yet, and then you know, two hundred years later, we, we seem surprised when. We try to enforce the our, our view of democracy mm-hmm. or gov, government onto a country and go, okay, well, why isn't it working? Yeah. William? The thing about Afghanistan is it's not a country. Well, not in, a, in, not in the sense that we think of as a country. It's basically a bunch of tribes. And over these tribes are a handful of warlords. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, but you know, I mean, we don't understand who the Taliban is. We don't fully comprehend that. No, we don't comprehend. We don't even comprehend who ISIS K is. This is a new thing. This is a new thing. ISIS K. Well, no, it's, it's just, just ISIS with a K at the end. It's the same uh, shit. No, it's, ju- it's just another. It's a. It, it's a junior league. Well, ISIS was never it's... one organization. Okay. It was the difference was... between ISIS and ISIS K would be saying the difference between Christian uh, Catholics and Presbyterians. Yeah. yeah. It's actually it's actually difference. what it is because they're all Islamic states, but they're Islamic states based on different belief systems. So Islam is like Christianity, it is broken down into denominations yeah. like Pashtu and you know The only and, difference and, and, is uh, Presbyterians are much more dangerous. So. <laughs> really than the Catholics? We're kind of crazy, no? <laughs> I don't know, the Catholics have done their share of I mean, yeah, yeah, right. the, <laughs> over the I don't even go to church. And that's the reason why the Taliban don't like um, ISIS case because ISIS you know, because the Taliban are they very they're a varying different religious group. Mm-hmm. ISIS K are a completely different religious group. The Northern Alliance are a completely different religious group. And they don't get along the same way that Catholics and Church of England or Anglicans don't get along. Yeah. Yeah. It's way, all comes into a fundamental different reading of the same book. By the way, I don't want to stop our discussion, but I'm I'm noticing that Ray Renati is playing with all the various uh, things he got on his wrist as he was being operated on. Right? Oh yeah, I just realized I didn't take it off. I was trying. To take you know, there's it no off. way you're going to get those off except with a scissors, a pair of scissors. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I do. I've tried to cut break those things myself, and uh, you know. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. They uh, they cut them off when you go into the coffin too. Do they? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know, but they that, are that's, hard to get that's off. That's good. That's good <clears throat> to know. You know. Um. So oh, so. Uh, how are we handling this badly? In your opinion, Ross? Um. Yes. But then we were handling badly from the beginning. Yeah, and we had because we're treating it the same way as Vietnam, which was a counterinsurgency, which is a political issue, but we're dealing it as a military one. And because of the fact is that we like all the coalition forces who went in to train the Afghan National Army and all these groups in Afghanistan, we tried to impart our viewpoint onto these forces, but we never actually gave them a chance. It was like literally I was mentioning it earlier yeah. in another the interview I was doing. It's like getting the Boy Scouts giving them modern weapons and expecting them to be able to hold the line against trained military forces because we we, we truly you know we trained the, you know the afghan police the afghan national army which is great except that we had set the bar for them so low <laughs> that they, there was no way they were going to meet it because we they basically took whoever was friendly to the government at the time it didn't mm. they didn't ask people you know are you trained do you want to defend your your your, your, your area it's a case of 
you guys, you're gonna you're gonna be military now. And it's like, great. Um, and then, you know, we're not expecting them to actually do anything because we're holding the bar so low for them. You know, they, yeah. they might be like a two on a good day, but we're telling their superiors they're a five. Hmm. Or they're a six. <laughs> and then the next group comes in, and then that, because they have to be, you know, get some improvement, they then say, oh, no, no, they're a six. Well, are you, no, su- are, are you surprised with the rapidity that the takeover happened? Because I wasn't. Not really. I wasn't. I knew the minute we said we were going, that place was going to get overrun. They were sitting there waiting for 20 years to do it. I knew that when I was there in 2006. You were there in 2006. Were yeah. you serving over there? In the Navy. In the Navy. Wait yeah. a minute. A ship. In, you had a ship. You had a, a, sh- a ship in the desert. Oh yeah, camp. In oh, the no. Navy. <laughs> no, they, were sending, they were sending naval personnel over to Afghanistan for support units. To, and they were, to, what but you, I, so, I knew I knew then that if we pulled out, the Taliban was going to take that place in a week. And it turns out I was right. Well, I don't think I. I let's not. I'm not going to diminish your intelligence here, but let's sure. dim, let's diminish it by this much that if you knew it, our government should have known it. Yes, well, that's that comes back to what I was saying before. Like we're pushing up the chain, saying, "Oh no, we're training them. They're competent. They're doing all this." And the thing is, the people who are telling these, you know, these fabrications are starting to believe what they're saying. So you know, while at Williams level. <clears throat> He's like, this is bullshit. They're gonna, they're gonna, they'll fold like a deck of cards. We left. They threw the guns down. And well, uh, let me. Uh, the guys we, up, up yeah. above him are saying, "Oh no, these guys, you know, yeah, they're good. They're good." They start believing it. Then they're like, "Oh, why did they fall so badly?" It's like, well, because you are believing your own bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Part of how you succeed in government is the ability to tell your superiors exactly what they want to hear. Hmm. Hmm. I know that I, I might as well announce that space is a vacuum, but that's basically how that works, and it's doubly so in the military. Uh, it's why you know, it's why the kill counts in Vietnam were so ridiculously overinflated. You know, a patrol goes out, they kill a thousand guys. Well, actually, they only killed like maybe five or ten. No, but each time that report goes up the chain, they'll add another zero to the end of the number. Do you know how they counted? The... You know how they counted the bodies in uh, in Vietnam? Some of them twice. Well, no, there's an arm over there. That's one. Yeah. There's a leg over there. That's two. You know, there's a head over there. That's three. Hmm. They were counting body parts. They weren't counting people. And then when that report gets up the chain, they'll add another whole bunch of numbers to it, and then another bunch, another bunch, and then it gets to you know to the president, and it's like, oh, how hmm. many could you, did you kill in that operation? Oh, those twelve Americans killed one hundred and fifty thousand North Vietnamese. Yeah. Oh, we're doing well. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, look, war is pathetic, and it and it. it, it when are we ever going to learn? You know, I think it's when we when we stop thinking that things can be solved militarily. Like if we went into Afghanistan after you know after the initial period where like you know the Taliban's been ousted, and then we actually empowered the local people to actually want the North, the, the, the legitimate government, well, whatever the legitimate government is, mm-hmm. to be in power. Then that we would have made a lot of progress. I mean, we like we, we did, and we've done that. We in recent in, well, in living we, memory, we, like, we we kept being in bed with a series of dictators. Oh, we back more losers than a television. I mean, executive. Kurzai, <laughs> Kurzai was the worst. Yeah, he was. That's the time I was there. That that regime. By the way, that airport they're uh, they're at, they're talking about, is named to Kur, after Kurzai. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Kurzai, yeah. Harvey, Harvey Kurzai. <clears throat> Karzai regime was co- totally inept and corrupt. I he was willing to work with the, with the with the coalition, which is why we backed him. Yeah. Well, could it be said that anybody that takes over that country or runs that country thinks about it as something that is now his, and that he can use for his own devices? Yes, that would be a yeah, that'd be reasonable to say. Yeah, yeah. So how do we fight that? We how, don't. how do we overcome mm-hmm. that? We don't. We empower the locals to do it. But how do we get the locals to want to do it? Well, we, we hopefully in the last twenty years where we've been empowering women to you know you seek education and well the, the women, young people. The women, oddly enough, are the only ones that are doing uprisings right now in Afghanistan. Yeah. Well, they that's, got more balls than the Afghan army. That's for then sure. we need oh, to encourage yeah. them. We need to empower the Afghan women. 
because you see you saw it in you know in the rest during the spring the, the arab spring where these countries were inspired at the local level at the low level the young you know the younger generation going nah we're not we're sick of this bullshit we're not going to deal with this anymore we out externally we can't force that change that has to come naturally don't you but i think the yeah. only good thing out of the last 20 years is going to be that we've inspired an entire generation of men and women to go actually no we don't want to be an islamic republic we want or an islamic state we want to be a democratic republic or a whatever they want and we're not going to put up with this old boomer bullshit anymore and we want a pizza hut on every corner. Yes, yeah, exactly. You know, that may that may be just enough, but that's <clears> what we need to do. We need to empower these people because obviously it's also a country that's been in, you know, occupied for most of its living history. Yeah. You know, us coming in, help them, is just another occupying force. They were never going to be receptive of us. Yeah. No, they were they never wanted us there ever. Well, I mean I can make the I can make the case. Yeah. For going into Tora Bora, mm -hmm. that was that was completely justified. But I I can't explain why we decided to hunt, hang out for the next twenty years. I want to go to Jeff next, but you know that the mm -hmm. Taliban in the last couple of days have said that going into Tora Bora was wrong because Osama bin Laden didn't do nine eleven. Oh, that's what they're saying. Oh, come on. No. When, how I do we know? Swearing. How do we know that he did it or didn't oh, do it? You know, uh, at this point, uh, according to the Taliban, he was not responsible for nine eleven, and Hitler was not responsible well, for the extremist no, but, I mean, but, but, but all I'm saying is this is what they're uh, uh, saying, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. why are they saying it now, twenty years later? Yeah. You know, and because is there a the possibility? Now, is, there, to... is there a possibility that he? He didn't do it, you know, he didn't order it himself, that he, it was some of his people who went ahead and did this because they thought it was a good idea. I mean, all I'm saying is the Taliban have said he was not responsible for 9-11. Uh, yes, and that's why they why they were preventing the Americans from going into Tora, Tora Bora. Yes, uh, Ray? Uh, didn't bin Laden uh, admit to being the instigator of the first attempt to blow up the building with that bomb in the basement you mean with, the, the, with the shake or whatever his name was at the from new jersey oh, yeah, and the the well guy. remember they tried to knock down the, the twin towers with a bomb or one of them with the a bomb, bomb in the basement, in the basement. That, was, that, that was the blind yeah. sheik yeah yeah that was the oh, it, oh it was it wasn't bin laden no no it was a blind oh sheik. okay yeah. okay yeah uh, but mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, it. it um, I, whoever whoever was responsible for 9/11, I'm sure, was sitting over there, hearing the news reports and going, "Fuck it, worked." <laughs> you yeah, know, I, do I don't yeah. think anybody. Ex I don't think even they expected it would work, but it did. I mean, it was amazing. And not even that, how many planes they got? They hit Washington, they hit New York. They... And and then they hit those our two buildings here in New York, and they collapsed. Yeah. I mean, come on, you'd say, well, we hit it, and we didn't. We can't take it down. They're two big buildings. I mean, I, I bet they were sitting over there going, fuck, now we're really in trouble. We better pack <laughs> you know? and move because somebody's going to pay for that. Yeah. yeah, and and they didn't, you know, they didn't stop looking for uh, uh, Osama bin Laden until they got him. <coughs> you know, uh, the house that roared. Yeah, it was yeah. A, another good ten or fifteen buildings that they could have non knocked down. Also, well, I think those really? buildings they went after because they're kind of standing up there, like saying, "Knock oh, this sure. chip off my shoulder." Choice. You know. Yeah. And also, they represent, or they they did, they represented, uh, they represented capitalism. Yeah, you would have hit the financial district, really. That was well, it. the financial district's too low lying. It's not a big deal, mm -hmm. you know. But those two buildings stood up there and went, "This is what capitalism is." Okay? Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And I think that's what they were. They What's were the building doing? in Chicago, Alex? There was there was so many rumors they were trying to get that. That building was on Chicago, lockdown. Chicago, uh, the Chicago uh, uh, yeah, Sears the, Tower. Sears Tower, yeah. Because they thought that was going to get hit too. They were, is it still the Sears Tower, or the, because Sears isn't in business anymore? Well, it was probably, that. once they stopped getting the catalog, they just take it off the list. Formerly the Sears <laughs> Tower. You know, here's where. Can I just 
getting off topic here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sears is was a major company in this country oh, yeah. for what? I remember that. It's it's three quarters of a century, maybe a century. About right. That's about right. And they had a thing called the Sears Catalog. And yes. every home in America had a copy of the Sears catalog, mm-hmm. and then you could send away to Sears, or go to a local Sears, but you could send mm-hmm. away to Sears and get anything in this catalog, and it had everything in it. It did have everything. From Beep. seeds, Beep. to clothing, to yeah. uh, just uh, wigs, you know, hair Cars, pieces, I mean, everything. Trucks. Why these guys didn't think, if they just said to themselves, you know, we've yeah. got to modernize this, and they've got this thing called the internet, why don't we put this online and sell online all this stuff? <laughs> there wouldn't have been uh, an Amazon. Sears completely got wiped out by Amazon because they didn't say, hey, because they had they had everything in place. They had the shipping, they had the whole they, deal, and they blew it. Yeah. yeah. You know, you wonder if Bezos might have got inspired by looking at that catalog as a kid, saying, "Look at it, they're selling everything." No, Be- see, Bezos, you can buy everything. I, no, I think I think Bezos was only inspired by the fact that he wanted to sell books. It was going to be I'm, the I'm world's. Fine it's good. Well, Amazon was a tech company. company. It, it, it was well, it was a tech company, but it was selling yeah. books. Mm. Whereas Sears, which wanted to be a conglomerate, that's all. That, that's the difference between the two of them. Ah, yeah. Sears, good. it's like Blockbuster. Blockbuster competed with Netflix. Blockbuster didn't want to diversify because they knew, well, our system works. Why would we need to diversify? Yeah. People love coming to our stores and browsing the shelves and looking for movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why would they why would they want to need to diversify? The internet and if you guys remember, at the time, internet was also this thing that wasn't really what it is now. Like we couldn't do this when blog when Netflix first came out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and these are people who made their made a mistake by not suddenly seeing the future. But that's always been the case. Yes, uh, Jeff? I, I still have a, a question for uh, Ross. Is that yes. Yeah. yeah. And that is, how, did, how does Australia stay out of getting in trouble? For the, in regards to... World War II, right? America. Well, they, you don't seem to put your nose in other people's business. Um overriding alliances and the fact that you guys do a lot of work to draw attention to yourself <laughs> so australia will follow due to it because we're bound by alliances uh to basically bail you guys out of every mess you guys pull yourself into and because of that we're always the minor player uh yeah. we don't tend to have a lot of we don't tend to get a lot of the flack that you guys do granted in after 9 11 in 2002 there was the Bali bomb <coughs> the Bali bombings in Indonesia. Sorry. <coughs> in Indonesia. And that was designed specifically to target Australia. The difference is is because of our our immigration laws and our biosecurity laws, it's very hard to bring insurgents to Australia to attack. You have to radicalize them here. So you can't hijack a plane in Australia. Because also nothing that we have is high enough where it'd be like you'd be hitting like a bridge or a we, our population density isn't large enough where right. a terrorist style attack would work here. Yeah, but Sydney's big enough to. We've only got a population of 5 make million. A big, uh, I just don't know too many people that are pissed at Australia. Well, that's true. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, you guys seem to kind of keep your nose out of other people's business. Uh, you know, you run your own game. You've got some problems there right now with uh, demonstrations and so on and so forth. But it, you, as you're saying, America draws attention to itself. Well, I served with Australians in Afghanistan. Yeah? Yeah. They had the beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is that? You know, they, like, it's it's got to do with the Australian mentality. You know, it's, it's the she'll be right mentality. You know, it's the reason why, you know, Australia and New Zealand are two of the like, you go anywhere and you say you're from Australia or New Zealand, everyone's going to be like, oh, yeah, you guys are great. Yeah. It's because of the way that we handle us. We, you know, our individual citizens handle themselves globally. Yeah. Like yeah. in the First World War, we weren't seen as the liberators of France. We were just, you know, the guys doing their bit to help out a friend. You know, like when we were bivouacked in the, you know, the French villages, we took on the role of the, you know, the missing well, son well, or, well, the, well, or the brother. Yeah, well, you know what's interesting is we used, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Pearl Harbor, as an excuse 
to get into war on both fronts. We weren't in the, you know, in the in in Germany or in in, in Europe and whatever and fighting that war until we ramped up because of Pearl Harbor and so we then ramped up there and then that gave the president the power to send troops over to Europe. Uh, the only and there's a there's stories that have gone around for years that the United States actually knew that Pearl Harbor was going to be attacked and Roosevelt wanted them to attack it as a pretext to be able to also go into Europe. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean the difference is, though, is that when Australia joins the World Wars, I mean, when Australia joins any conflict, we're usually doing it in defense of someone else. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and your, your question is, did they did those people die in vain? It's got to do with what they believed. Did they, when they well, went to these countries, did they believe that they were making it better for the for the locals? Were we, they were we, they yeah. trying to restore <clears throat> in, autonomy or independence to the people? Yeah, well, you know, did was that sacrifice worth it for them? In it's very hard for us yeah. to see it as, as say, oh, that 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 death was meaningless because you know what happened afterwards. But it's like, but you've given hope. You might have, you know, you might have died, but you might have given hope to one person or two people in that village that you helped that one time, right. and right. that might be enough to force social change in that country. Well, also, also, I mean, we we lost. Um, if I'm not mistaken, f about 550,000 um, men, and I'll say men because it was basically men at that time, uh, in in uh, the uh, European front. Uh, however, at the same time, and this is the reason why the Russians hate us, do you know how many people they lost? Millions. 50 million. Four out of five people killed in the Second World War were Russian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, really? And that's wow. the reason why the Russians hated us, because what we said we were going to do is we were going to create a second front so that the, the Germans would have to go after that as well mm -hmm. and take the strain off of, of Russia, but we didn't. And we never came across, and therefore they lost 50 million people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, I mean, there were some devastating uh, wars in, the, in that, uh, you know, in the Russian... Uh, uh, situation. It was horrible, just horrible. So when you talk about horrible wars, folks, you know, yeah, we lost a lot in World War II, but we didn't save our allies, which were also the mm. Russians. Yeah. And they died in great numbers. Terrible. Well, the, terrible. the other thing that I think Australia does a, a smart thing is they don't let Americans to come there, to go to Australia to get a job there or to move there or anything like that. They're pretty negative on that. Yeah, we'll take just about anybody here. That's because yeah. Australia requires you to actually have a skill. Did okay. you hear? Did you hear? You know, skill? I don't know that I'm that fond of Biden right now. I just think he's kind of, I don't know. To begin with, does he have to give a speech every day? I don't like the way he talks. You either. know, at least I he got. He doesn't some, tweet. At least, at least I got some shits and giggles out of Trump. Well, you after, know, after these last four years, I mean, the bar has been set so low to where oh, he acts like a human being. Yeah, but but every day he's out there, and I get a little. I'm getting a little tired of him. He's yeah. on the same end though. Huh? Same thing, Alex. Though, if he wasn't talking about the problems in, Afga in Afghanistan or the or COVID. You would then also be sitting here going, "This guy is doing nothing. All he's doing is staying in the office, being safe." Yeah, but it, I, it, I don't think you need to go on television every day to show that you're doing something. You know, Rob, is that you, your number, Alex? Unfortunately, <laughs> that Trump has set the bar, as as Will, Will pointed out. Trump has set the bar where he was doing bullshit all the time, and the news media were grabbing up. That the minute that Biden stops doing any presses or any kind the media is going to jump on him saying oh you know sleepy bill you know sleepy biden is not doing anything and yeah, that's the problem on the other hand, like, you know, he, uh, and if he does dead if he doesn't on the other hand on the other hand uh we could go like uh oh i don't know two weeks without hearing a word from obama you know obama only <laughs> held a press conference every now and then only gave a speech every now and then when there was something important to say no we didn't have what's going on when Obama was in well, no, no, How yes, many Americans died? Oh, COVID yes, we did. We absolutely well, those we were did. the days. Tan suit, yeah. 
COVID? No. You know, I mean, uh, and and forget COVID and forget Afghanistan and forget uh, uh, building the wall. Trump would have been on the air every day anyway. He would have found something to gin up, you know. Um, but I just, I, I don't know. I think that the problem with Biden is he's not forceful, okay? The speech he gave today on the Afghanistan situation, uh, the, he he just didn't seem forceful, you know. What'd you want him to do? Biden Tell him we're shipping you Trump. That would have been nice. What? What, did, that, what, is, that, what does that mean, Alan? I, we'll ship you Trump, and Trump will take over and control your country. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that he didn't seem he didn't seem to have this kind of force where you go, yeah, go get him, Joe. You know, we're I think the you, problem Jim. is is that Biden is playing a very measured game at the moment because he can't be seen as belligerent because that'll antagonize those who are, in, are supporting the, um, the Taliban. But also, he also can't appear weak at the same point because if he says, we're going to get the guys who done this, all the anti-war people who backed him are going to be like, hang on, you said this war has to end. We don't want to send another generation of people to die in this country. But if he doesn't do anything... The military people who back him are going to go, what do you mean? Those people died, and you're doing nothing to defend them. You know, we don't have to send one troop and put them on the ground in Afghanistan to take care of ISIS-K, all right? Just drone them? Huh? Drone them? Drone them. You don't even have to have people in airplanes anymore. Drone them. I mean, the U.S. still has air superiority over Afghanistan. Y yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, and so why not why not do the drone deal, you know, or why not do some bombing through planes and so on? I or mean that's that's the power because that we have. I my old joke is you know I mean we could bomb them back to the Stone Age, but the only thing wrong with that is it would be put them about two or three years ahead of where they are right now. The problem with that though is that in that case you are being belligerent to a, a le legally recognized government. So you're you're now you now America is the aggressor. Yes, but you're not going after the Taliban. You're going after ISIS K, who the Taliban doesn't like, and would probably just go, okay, we'll turn our backs. Go ahead, go get them. Yeah, which, which I think will probably happen in about you know for three or four days once the Taliban <laughs> makes this stance, saying we don't support this, and there's some level of bipartisan agreement. Mm -hmm. But at the moment. If uh, America or uh, I don't know one of the coalition partners does a strike on a ISIS K position, it's going to be look at these imperialist powers being aggressive on our Muslim brothers, and that's going to uh, cause no, more, more they, harm. They've already said. I think they've already almost get, given a kind of silent okay to go ahead and get these guys because they just uh, they've said they don't like them. They don't, you know they and they present believe it or not a real challenge to the Taliban yeah. government. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, we're, st we're still difficult. E, is that it's they're gonna have to kill a bunch of those people, but they're gonna kill as many other people who are like their cousins next door, just by and accident. every and every single person you kill is one more person who has to be avenged, and that's yeah, the problem that we've never been able to understand. Yeah, uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, Yes, uh, 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 Alan. Okay, that's that's okay, Alex. So, um, my thought is that Biden is working on a on a, on a way to handle this militarily. Did we didn't know from Obama when he was planning to take out um, Osama bin Laden? Mm -hmm. We just heard about it after it was done. They sent mm -hmm. the seals in, and boom, the guy this. The Navy SEALs did what they do, and they and they and they uh, killed uh, Osama bin Laden. Well, it was a pretty fast decision that they made with Osama bin Laden because they didn't know where he was, and all of a sudden they found out where he was. Well, I think they were tracking him. I think people no, they weren't. Knew it they were slowly but... tracking him. They found out, and I think within a couple of weeks they were in there. Well, yeah. we may do the same thing. Maybe Biden will do the same thing. Well, what's he going to do? I mean, ISIS K. Okay, so you, you you're going to go get the guys that did the suicide bombing. They're dead. All right. Okay. Uh, you're going to get ISIS K. Where? Who? How? You know what the biggest problem they've got right now? Oh, a couple of problems. 
Uh, the big pro one of the big problems they've got in Afghanistan is that as ISIS, as uh, rather the Taliban has gone from province to province, they have also let everybody out of the prisons. Including the ISIS-K. Including the ISIS-K. That's where the ISIS-K came from. Some of them actually escaped from prisons that were still not opened up. Um, and, and so that's part of the problem they've got too. Now we've got an even bigger problem. Uh, yesterday, uh, they said that, uh, uh, or today, they said that, that uh, uh, Biden had to, he had some appointments that he had, and he had to do away with them, one of which was to have a conference call with all the governors to see where they were going to send all the Afghans, what states would take them and what, in what numbers and mm -hmm. so on and so forth, because we have brought over, I don't know how many thousands of Afghans who should uh, where be. Where did they end up? Huh? What, what, in 20 years ago, where did they end up? In Fremont, California. Well, uh, yep. uh, one of the guys they were interviewing who would help the Americans who was at the air base, Ramstein Air Base mm -hmm. in, uh, in Germany, right. said, uh, they said, so what are you going to do? And he says, I'm going to Sacramento. Now, how we pick Sacramento, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Nobody to tell you wants the goddamn to go honest truth, folks, I've been to Sacramento. I wouldn't pick Sacramento. Okay. I used to live down the street from Little from Little Cobble in Fremont. Oh, really? really? Where at? I I um I lived off of um. I lived off of uh, in Glenmore. Off the street, off Eggers, and. Uh, just down the road, about maybe two or three blocks away, was you know the center of Fremont, Centerville. That was Little Cobble. Yeah, I'm, I'm I live in Fremont. I was born and raised here, so yeah. yeah. But but it was a surprise to me, mm. you know, that all of a sudden all, all of them they're, they're in North Fremont. It did, didn't matter where, but you know, but they took over, and well, I think it, that a if, lot if, of them are going to yeah. come here. If you listen to Fox, they're going ahead with the theory that all these Afghanis who are coming over here, many of them are ISIS and they are Taliban and they're going to be here to get us. Uh, they, don't re uh, they don't realize that every one of those people is being vetted. If he doesn't have the proper affiliate, you know, the okay, proper Alex, is papers. This, is this the same Fox News dispensing the medical advice that you should take your ivermectin? That's oh. right. Well, yeah, the I, same group that says Australia is in martial law. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, yes. That, that, right. And, 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 <laughs> and, uh, and the same the same station that's saying there's big riots going on in Sydney, Australia, right now. So. Yeah. 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 Well, that's, Fox News is not believable. Well, the, <laughs> Fox is not news. Uh, Fox <laughs> News is no. no. Fox News is believable to the people who watch Fox News. Oh yeah. Because it's the uh, only yeah. reality they have. Oh, I have okay. an uncle who watches Fox News. Oh, he's gone. Just absolutely gone. But it's the we have somebody that comes on the show here on Tuesdays. I won't give up names or anything from 7.30 to 8. And he watches Fox News religiously. Does, if it's does not he, put does, out by it, Fox News, it's fake news. To well, him. does he watch Fox News or does he watch those other guys like Newsmax and uh, 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 One America News? Epic and yeah, that I think I think Fox News is a little too liberal for him. <laughs> Jesus, could be, could be, but it's uh, it's. Uh, I guess you got to be somewhere to the left of Attila the Hun. But the problem is, is, is that when you have <laughs> your, as your only news source Fox and you don't watch yeah. anything else. Then you believe all this stuff when somebody like Sean Hannity says, "Yeah, this ivermectin or whatever it's called uh, will uh, uh, will keep you from getting uh, You're supposed COVID. to thin it out with Clorox." Yeah, you you but do you, you a uh, Lysol chaser? When that's your only source of uh, news, uh, right. you you know, you're that's that's it, you know. Uh, so I mean. Uh, I, I could say they're idiots and they're morons, but the fact is the only information they're getting is this information, and this information is disinformation. So, you know. Mm -hmm. But then again, I, I, you, you know, I go to over to MSNBC, and I don't know that they're as any more honest than Fox. They've got their own lies they're perpetrating. You know, I can't stand MSNBC yeah. anymore. 
by the way, I mentioned this last night, and I saw more on it today. Uh, they gave, uh, what's her name? Uh, uh, Rachel Maddow just signed a contract at uh, $30 million a year. And they, she's going to be on the air less, less than she has been. And wow. next year, she's being taken off a regular program and just going to be doing specials. And they still got her signed up for like the next couple of years at thirty million dollars a year. Yeah. You need to I get her uh, agent, Alex. Huh? You need to get her agent. Oh hell, I need her agent. Mm. Everybody needs her agent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to negotiate that deal. Yeah, yeah, but she. So she's. Uh, uh, but but I and I don't consider her any any more objective than than Fox in her own way. She's got her her agenda. And she's going to sell it, just like Hannity sells his agenda. Mm -hmm. And I just would like to see somebody just come up with a news organization that doesn't have an agenda. I mean, that's the way CNN was started by Ted Turner. He got tired of having news where the people doing the news seemed to have an opinion because they'd scowl when they said something, you know? And that he wanted to start a news outfit where that didn't happen. And, it, and that's how CNN existed for many years, as being as objective as possible. And he mm -hmm. said, We're, we also go worldwide, so never refer to the United States mm -hmm. as us. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're, you're not talking for America. You're, you're talking for the world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, but all that was lost. You go over to CNN now, and it's biased, too. Look, Ray's getting that drowsy. Did they give you a lot of good drugs there? Uh, oh, you Ray? saw that? <laughs> yeah, I got I got my hillbilly heroin going. It's nice. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> are you really? Uh, are, are you my oxycodone. Oxycodone. Yeah. Oh, nice yeah. Okay. Take another one, Ray. You're too awake. Oh, I will before I go to bed. Yeah. Me. Careful, no? uh, I had to stop taking oxys when when I was prescribed them for pain. It was like, oh my god. Well, this is just temporary. I don't know. I, I think I got to stop. They this. all say I got to stop this thing I'm taking uh, uh, for uh, my neuropathy because I, I just I'm I'm I can't uh, I'm forgetting things. I just don't. It's not. It's not good. It's not good. Why don't and you I ask the doctor for an alternate drug, Alex? Huh? There isn't. There isn't. There isn't, there isn't an alternate drug. Have you tried Lyrica? That's right. what it is. Oh, no, okay, yeah. No, it's yeah, that works for me. Yes. Gabapentin, isn't it? No, it isn't. Oh, I thought you said it was. Lyrica and Gabapentin yeah. are similar, but they, it's they the work generic. Different. It's the generic Lyrica. Oh. It's pre called Pregabalin. So, a generic you know, Viagra. There are, only, there are only two things you can take, that or Gabapentin, and I didn't tolerate Gabapentin very well. So. Lyrica. Yeah. Yeah, that'll make you loopy. Yeah. Lyrica makes you loopy. I had to take it in the middle. I, w I was in a musical and I, I was on stage the whole show. And when you, I was sitting down, I started falling asleep in you, front of like 500 people. Yeah, what happened? You had to, you, but you but you also had to remember your lines. That, yes, that. I can remember my lines, but I couldn't remember what I had to do between scenes. Like I go off stage and I'm like, oh shit, what happens now? I had to have people tell me what to do. Yeah. It was horrible, so I just so, stopped taking it. So when it. I do this show every night, I always make some kind of mistake. The lights don't go on or something. It or, screws up your memory. Yeah. It, it really it, does. It, yeah, yeah, it does. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so thank you all for being here on our show called... Uh, it's the uh, Rumble, Rumble, Ramble. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, William, thank you. No, I'm so doing the screwing in the light bulb wave. Yeah, right, day. right. And thank you, uh, Ross. Uh, we really, we really, this is wonderful. You do yeah. the show a lot. It's wonderful right. to get a, another country's opinion on stuff, you know? Yeah, thanks, Ross. <laughs> yeah. And Welcome, guys. Alan. Come by more and often, Andrew. Ross. Uh, as long know, as Ross. we're in lockdown, I'll keep coming in. Yeah. Mm. And Ross, thank you. And uh, uh, Alan, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. To Ray, who is now whoop dee doo, <laughs> and of course Jeff, uh, who, I, no who, pain. who, who no I, pain. I I I love no and, and care about. Uh, thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. We want to we want to see you soon. We want to see you guys soon. Anyway, oh, everybody, give a big uh, wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, 
there they go, folks. That's our uh, group for tonight. That's our citizen panel for tonight. We'll assemble another one tomorrow night. There's going to be one right next uh, here on uh, GabNet with the intersection with uh, Jack Bishop. And he's going to be here with, you know, the uh, citizen panel. You can call him using Skype and call GabNet Live. That's it for me. i got to go. See you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Wear a mask, and if you don't, go get an injection, okay? Get inoculated. Get the vaccine, for Christ's sake. We need to get rid of this damn thing. Bye.